welcome again. I know you heard a lot about game organization today. Um, we will just give you some additional input, especially from a game developer uh, point of view, because that's a bit different from the agency point of view. So, yes, <coughs> welcome. <laughs> um, yes, this, um, what we're going to talk about, first of all, I will introduce um, our company, Good Game Studios, a bit. Um, what we do, what games we, what kind of games we do. Then I will talk about our localization. No, then Martina will talk about our localization department. Um, you will hear about uh, localization in game development, especially how it works in our company. Um, we have regular updates and new releases, which is kind of a different thing. Um, yeah, we will talk about the time frame that localization is involved and um, the localization scope we have to deal with in our company. And in the end, I will um, present the localization workflows that we encounter every day. So, uh, some general um, information. So, Gokim Studios is a German company, a GmbH, which just means. Um, we're owner managed. That means we are not um, dependent on investors to give us money, but we're just our own company, basically. Uh, we were founded in 2009, which means we're five and a half years old now. Uh, we have our headquarters in Hamburg, and almost all of us are in Hamburg. Um, we, of course, have a brands in Japan, Korea, for distribution issues mostly. Um, we are among the leading companies in the free-to-play gaming industry and we are the fastest growing gaming company in Europe. We just got a great award for that. Um, yeah, which means um, free-to-play gaming is of course a bit different from the big RPGs you have heard of today, but we will talk about it later a bit. Um, in our games we have more than 200 million registered players. Uh, in more than 200 countries. And we're now about 1,200 employees from different, from all over the world, basically. Um, yeah, and as, yeah, you know, in those five and a half years, we have grown to over 1,000 employees. That means our office space has also grown, of course. I think the exact numbers are not that interesting for you, but we have uh, a lot of space. Um, I will try to introduce our games. Um, our games are web and mobile games. Um, maybe you've heard of our most well-known game. Uh, we also have a TV ad for Good Game Empire. And uh, yeah, that's um, like a strategy building up games. Or you are the lord of a castle, and you have to yeah basically. Uh, build up your castle, um, gather resources, can attack other players, things like that. Um, <coughs> we also have a mobile version of that. Just to show what we can empire is not a screenshot here, but we have the mobile version. Which uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I don't Okay, we have also a mobile version, which is called Empire for Kingdoms. Um, it is um, similar, but it's an entirely uh, uh, yeah, own game, so it's not uh, yeah, not linked to a web version. And it's available uh, in the yeah, usual stores, Google and Apple. And Amazon, I think. Uh, we have um, Cook and Dick Farm, which is game because but um it's um not like farm rule was at least not in the beginning because it's um very big and in the beginning they have only a small patch of land and of course the main goal is to grow your farm to produce things to earn dollars and um, there are also features you can unlock and events that are starting at a regular basis so it never gets boring and our newest game, just released in last August, is Shadow Kings, which is um, 
uh, that and mobile version as well, but a mobile version is like the, the main game. You can see a screenshot that here it's, um, well, the basics are, it looks pretty similar to Empire, good game Empire, because you also have a castle and you build up and you attack other players, but the setting is very, very different. You have like a fantasy setting, you are fight together with um, dwarves and elves to fight all the shadow creatures, you know, and yes, that's what it's about, man. Um, just some more information on our company. Like I said, we're more than 1,200 employees right now. But it's not the newest number, but we're growing so fast that it's difficult to keep up. <laughs> we get about 100 new employees every month, so it's growing very fast. <laughs> like I said, from more than 50 nationalities, so people from all over the world come to Hamburg to work with us. And yeah, we have one vision. I, I don't know if you can read it. Um, yeah, we want to become a global player in the free to play gaming industry, and I think we're in a good way for that. I have a. It's not a newest uh, picture as well, because what was summer? Um, Martina, it's you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I was ill on the day. <laughs> and um, it's almost all the whole company. Yeah, in that time, now the picture would be even bigger, of course, because it was, I don't know, like 900? Yeah, people, at that time, it? 900. So, yeah, there's a lot of people. So, yeah, the management and the front, most important guys, <laughs> and yeah, everyone. And um, our localization team, just my monitoring platform. <laughs> we consist of about 20 people. Mm -hmm. Uh, it also it's also growing right now, and that includes also our um, testers, the QA, our internet translators, and us for the coordinators. Martina will tell you more about that later. What we're doing, and we are in cooperation with many other departments, so like uh, rollout, for example, those who are um, deciding which markets to enter, and which languages do we need for it. Um, marketing, game design, game text, and yeah, I think it's more important. Uh, yeah, of course we have it. Then that's like we, uh, as we are growing, we of course have a lot of jobs to offer. So um, I think both of us started with an internship, but you can also um, be a working student, which would be difficult if you're not living in Hamburg, I think, but it's possible. Um, we're sometimes doing better math, master thesis. Yeah, thesis. Uh, there are trainee programs, which is um, like the, the normal entry level. Or you can also choose direct entry, but as uh, if you're a student, you just finish it. Probably internship or trainee program. Um, so some of our departments, we of course, yeah, not only localization, that's for us the most important thing. <laughs> so um, we are, of course, a developing company, which means we have um, development in Java, Flash, PHP, also growing, also going in new directions. Um, we have art, we have game design, all those tech guys, <laughs> system administration, international rollout. Yeah, you can see for that. And more. So if you think you cannot really enter localization with something different like customer support or something like that. Just try. We also, I forgot to mention that we have brought some giveaways. Uh, feel free to take any of these and you can also contact us with these files. We have all the information there. Yes, do you want to? Of course. So, this is basically um, our department in August 2013. That's when I started. So that's how it looked like. We had one localization manager who was basically the team lead for a really, really small department at that time. We had two localization interns, which was me and Paul, an English-speaking guy. And we had one working student who came in on Fridays and did the proofreading for German text. So um, how it looked like? We as it is 
also now we developed in German, so our main language is German. Uh, then the uh, text gets translated into English and from English into all other languages which are up to 30 languages for Shadow Kings, for example, for uh, the App Store optimization text. Empire, which is our biggest game, has 26 languages. Big form is a little bit small, it is about 20, 21. 21. So that's also why we needed an English speaking guy in the company right in house because the English translations which we got from an agency were not so well. It's much better to have someone in house who is really like familiar with the game, who knows it very well, who is in the process, who can ask game designers about stuff, who can ask client people, even developers, about information he needs. So that was uh, the reason why Paul was there and I was there as well. Um, localization interns or localization project coordinators, which we are called right now, um, we take care of a specific project. For example, I am responsible for Empire for Gamers. Oh no. Wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. And what was the pointer? Ah, the This one. So this is my project, and this is uh, is a last project. <laughs> Our babies. Um. Yeah. So. Oh no. <laughs> wow. So um, what we do is we are really in the development process. We know exactly when there is a, an update, if there was an update, what is going to be in the update, which features, what does the game designers do, what does the QA do, do they test, what do they test and why. This is really important because we need to deliver the translations, the localizations on time. So we really need to know when the texts are coming to us. Um, mostly we are working on regular updates, which I will talk also later about, but um, the game designers like not to plan a lot in advance, so the features are still in development, which makes it kind of hard for us, and even if you are telling them we need the texts, like at least three days before they want to update, it sometimes works out and sometimes not. It's called Agile. It's called Agile, <laughs> exactly, but um, yeah, it's probably the best way to do that. Um, so this is what we do, um, we prepare a lot of stuff for the translators so they know what they are translating, so even if the feature or the new update is not there yet, which is in most of the cases, we do some kind of briefings, we try to get the translators as much information as we can. Um, we try to comment on every possible string on all the placeholders which are there so there's really everything is clear and even if they have uh, any question they are, the questions they are always free to contact us of course we are the agency which we are using for um, all the other languages and ask us any question and we will answer them so this was it and this is also now how it works in January 2015, I'm yeah. very sorry, um, we still have a localization manager who is a team lead for a quite big uh, department now. We have seven localization project coordinators. Uh, for example, at the beginning I started with Big Form and then I went over to Empire and Empire for Kingdoms. And at one time I was managing two projects, which would be definitely too much now. Um, so we have a different person who takes care of Empire, we have different persons who take care of Shadow Kings and the marketing texts which come with these games and so on. So we have also two in-house translators, of course we needed someone for English because English is just so important um, and we also have one person for Japanese. Which is also great because Asian languages usually create many problems when it also comes to internationalization, to code, and so on. So we have someone for that as well. 
We have three localization QA project coordinators, which are coordinators who take care of testing, of localization testing. Um, I think we started that like a few months ago. It's quite new, so we are still working on getting it implemented into our processes. It's quite hard. And we have also six localization testers. Um, so right at this moment we cover like a lot of languages in-house. Um, we have Spanish, Czech, Polish, um, Russian, Portuguese, Japanese, Chinese, Dutch. Dutch, French, and we will have Italian. And I soon. <laughs> and I hope I didn't forget anyone. So this is what we cover in house right now. So that's quite a lot. Yeah. Any questions? No. Great. <laughs> Um, yeah, the localization in game development, it was quite hard for me to actually find or to give you some concrete information because the game projects are just so different. Like when you are switching from, from Big Form to Empire, the two projects were totally different and it's even a greater difference when you switch into a mobile game project because they work in a very different way, uh, which is called Agile. Uh, so, but yeah, you can work on, or you can have PC games, console games, browser games, and mobile games. Um, right at this moment, we are working mainly on browser and mobile games. Um, but uh, the two approaches are very, uh, very different. But what's uh, similar is, or are the updates, which I already talked about a little bit where there is new content, new features, but you have the game, the core of the game, the 95% are already translated, um, which is great if the translations are good and it's really bad when the translations are bad. Um, the localization is done uh, simultaneously with the development of the content, so that's what I said when you have a patch of texts with the new feature, you don't really see them in game. You have probably only a briefing from game design, but you have pictures and so on, but it's not much. And then there are new releases, which means you have a new game. Everyone loves new games and the whole package needs to be translated from scratch. Marvel talk about that later on. Um, yeah, the regular updates. So, new features or new content, as I said, simultaneously with the game development. Uh, of course, to make all the translations consistent, we use glossaries, we use translation memories, we have a CAD tool. Um, we have also an in-house developed content management system tool, which makes it also a little bit easier. Um, we are also a software company, as Isabel said. That means if we need a fancy new tool, it's possible. I'm not saying it's gonna happen in a week, but it's possible to go to a project manager and tell him, look, we would need something because our processes don't work as well without this tool. And yeah, and we have macros, so as you can see, we're also loving Excel, everyone loves Excel. Um, yeah. The preparation phase is not quite long with the updates, it depends of course on the updates. Big Form, for example, had some huge updates. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm talking huge, but it was only 7,000 words, the biggest it's one. Huge for us. <laughs> it's huge for us because when you have 7,000 words and you expected only 2,000 words and you said to the agency, oh, we will have 2,000 words and then it's 7,000 and the localization needs to be done in two or three days, then it's quite a lot. Um, yeah, so there is not so much content, but still everything needs to be prepared. The project coordinator needs to really sit on that and prepare all the briefings and go through all the texts and comment on it. And if he sees something 
sketchy, you know, you, you have to ask game designers what do you mean with that, why did you do this like that, so uh, it's quite some work. Um, yeah, the rest of the game is already translated, which is great if the translation is not too old, like we had the problem with Empire when I started on Empire, that was a game which was already three years old, and the translations which happened three years ago didn't happen in a cat too. I don't know actually where it happened. It happened. I don't know. I don't even know who did that. Um, I heard something about customer support people who once spoke Polish, so they translated it into some language. <laughs> that's hard. Of course, that that's hard to manage. Um, yeah. Um, so if the translation quality is high, then you have a very nice project. If the translation quality is low, then you will have to fight with it like in the next few months because it's not easily done. Um, the content of the whole update can change and it will change. You can be sure of that. So. If you have sent your badge to the agency and you think you are done now and it's your time to get a cup of coffee, game design will show up at your table and tell you that they forgot about 100 tricks. Yeah, exaggerating, but it happens. Um, you also depend on the whole team and on the update deadline. So if someone makes the decision to update a day earlier, then you will have a problem because you already communicated another deadline to the agency and now you have to change it and now you have to even look if it's possible to make it. Um, so that's what we fight for and with. Um, new releases, um, as I said, everyone loves new games. Um, but it's, it's quite complicated actually. Uh, you are starting from scratch, so you have freedom. Like if you didn't like your old Arabic translator, you can choose another one. If you didn't like the agency you were working uh, with, then you can choose another one. If you wanted to try out a new CAD tool, feel free to do so. But um, it also means that everything can go wrong because you have almost no workflows, no processes which are already there. Um, so it's uh, really important to do the whole setting up quite early in the development process. If the project manager or product manager is approaching you and telling you, oh, and by the way, in three weeks we want to release the game and we have no localizations yet, then you will try not to faint and uh, you will be really stressed the next, for the next three weeks and um, probably the localization won't be that good. Um, so what you need actually is to work with the whole game team right from the beginning. Even though there is nothing at the beginning because everything is in concept so you don't even know what game is it going to be. Is it going to be a puzzle game? Is it going to be a strategy game? You don't know that. Um, you don't, you haven't seen any pictures yet, nothing, so, but it's um, important to meet the people, to meet the project manager, to meet the project manager, to talk with them, to state clearly at the beginning what you need them to do, what, what materials, what briefings uh, you need from them, when do you need the texts, so it's, it's really important to do that. Identifying the scope of the of the whole project, of course. Um, do they want to make a really big game with a small quest, a small quest which has two hundred thousand words, or how is the game? How is the concept? Is it going to be a small game like Mario Brothers with thousand five hundred words, or is it going to be something really big, like um, like Final Fantasy fourteen? <laughs> Um, and which languages do they want? Do they want like 
only few, three languages, the most important, or do they want 26 like Empire has? That's also an issue. You will also probably have more problems to get a translator into Lithuanian than you will have with getting a translator into Russian. Um, yeah, um, setting up the text freezes for localization batches. So if it's going to be a bigger game, you won't be able to do that in one batch, probably. Or I would say it like that, sending out a big batch with 100,000 words is not a good idea. Uh, it's The whole managing process is much bigger, it takes much more time. Um, you will get lo lots of logs from the translators. You will basically be spammed with uh, with all the communication for for whole weeks. So uh, small batches are a little bit better because also then you can test what you already have if the game is working. Um, so this is much better. So talking with the whole game team, with game design, when can they deliver the first batches? Um, so you can start actually. Um, preparing documentation and glossaries is also very important if the translators get only plain text which tells them click here and a window opens it, you know, the translations won't be that good as if you explain uh, that the player needs to click a button which says play which opens a window with something so that helps a lot. And of course finding, uh, finding the right tools, like for example a cat tool which you want to use, um, finding the right content management system tool, booking resources, so that's everything that needs to be considered in the whole process. Yeah, and that is what I already talked about um, when the localization steps in. Uh, so as soon as possible uh, in the pre-production phase is the best. Why? Because um, some of the languages are more challenging when it comes to coding as well, like for example Arabic. If you have already a final game, a final product, and you just recently decided to um, localize it into Arabic, you will have a really bad time doing so. Um, it will be almost impossible. Um, Asian languages can be also very special when it comes to some player input, for example, if he needs to tap in his or her name. So, um, Also, the developers need to be aware of some localization issues. Um, like, for example, please do not hard code at all. It's still an issue, of course, because um, when you looked at how many new people we have, it's clear that not everyone has experience with projects which get localized into 26 languages. So we get also questions like, uh, can I hard code a point at the end of a sentence or not? Are people aware of that? Um, we, we make them. We try to. We, 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 we try really hard to make them aware of that. But those questions pop up every time. It's so n not everyone is actually. Um, yeah, and we have also we we have some in-house uh, languages or lots of in-house languages as I told you. But those are also only resources which we need to plan some. How to how to use them? Um, I cannot pay spend my my Japanese translator with a batch with, which has ten thousand words and then s tell her okay I need that by tomorrow. It's just not possible. So we need to plan our resources as well. When you have more games which are making updates um, simultaneously, then it's sometimes hard because big form. Uh, makes a big update. 7,000 words needs to be done in two days, but when also Empire has an update on these days, or Empire for Kingdoms, then we have a problem, because our translators can do only so much. You showed us 2,500 words a day is, is what they can do. 
So the localization scope, it's, I talk mainly about the games, but of course it's not only games. It's um, glossary, glossaries which need to be translated and reviewed sometimes and new um, entries are added with every update. There are lots of marketing texts like emails. Um, of course, for example, browser games, they have uh, huge email marketing mobile games not so much, there's only little. Um, landing pages, banners, texts for app stores, keywords need to be localized as well, translated, websites or website, the shop which needs to be translated as well, terms and conditions, forums, patch notes for example, and also the trailers which I wanted to show you. Do you know what we can do if it just got black and let's see how it works? Have you touched the screen? Ah, okay. Oh, it's a touch screen. Yeah. It's a trailer for Empire for Kingdoms, for <coughs> one of our main games. Isn't German. Ihr könnt die Welt verändern, ruhmreiche Taten vollbringen und zu Legenden werden. Seid ihr bereit? Empire for Kingdoms, jetzt im App Store und auf goodgame.de. Basically, there was a whole review process when we translated this uh, trailer. First, the text was translated. Um, then we had to pick the speakers, the actors. So we had like three samples, up to four samples for every language. And we asked some of our native speakers <laughs> to review these samples. Um, uh, then the first audio was made and it got back to us and we listened to that. We still found uh, some mistakes like for example some speakers uh, said the name of the game wrongly like not Empire but Empru or something like that. Um, sometimes the um, website like for example you can play this on goodgame.com was um, surprisingly good game dot fr I don't know why because probably they, they took just the French version and yeah um, and then we got to mix with the background music as well and that was another review which we had to do because for example in my Czech version the background music was so strong that in at one point it overtuned the speaker and his sentence was cut off in half. So that was another one. Yeah. And so we have a nice trailer now in all languages, which is great. <laughs> and the next point is is a boss. Yes. Um, now I'm going to talk about the actual workflows that include all of the things you have heard already. Um, so as Martina already said, um, our workflows are already different among the different game projects um, because the sizes are different, of course, sometimes we also have small updates in big firm, but sometimes we have big ones. Um, yeah, the deadlines are difficult, um, as sometimes um, at the same, if there's an update in Empire and in Big Firm at the same day, um, it's more difficult to handle than if they just... Um, are not at the same day or in different weeks and yeah, then the processes inside of the uh, game development team are really different among projects as well. Um, so again we have a um, CAD tool and a CMS tool we use, um, that's just the main tools we use for our work and I would also say Skype is one of the most important tools to 
um, <coughs> and talk with the game developers and with the project team. And yes, and as already mentioned, um, our key to accomplish this task is that not everyone does everything, but we have dedicated project managers for yeah, every game project and also um, other projects may come up, like if we have a special conversion marketing project or something like that. Um, so we have uh, four phases I want to present. We have a preparation phase, a localization phase, um, the delivery check, and the test, which is important. Preparation phase. Um, yeah, that's uh, what you already heard about. We are responsible for yeah, collecting all information that is possible. So we have to check how much text will come, um, what kind of text will come. We have to inform the agency that there will be something with as many information as possible. So if we have uh, like a scope, a date, and yeah, also how urgent it is or yeah, when we need it. And um, yeah, we familiarize ourselves with the product and especially with the new features that are about to come. Um, so we uh, take a look if there's a new event with a new quest line. So how is it the normal interface? Is it a new interface? Um, are new characters coming or is it uh, just like a small addition to a feature that's already there? Those are all the things we need to um, yeah, we need to check and we need to know. And uh, we have to uh, communicate those information to the agency. Um, that's, we mainly do that with um, briefings. Briefings, uh, in our case, are like documents where we collect everything that we know. We can yeah, add screenshots and if there are already some, or if not, then at least mock-ups of the approximate um, yeah, order of the text uh, boxes and stuff. And um, also background information. If there is a new character coming to the game, we have to tell them what he speaks like, what he looks like, what he's going to do. Uh, we're also extracting new terminology. So um, when, we, when a German text is like done or almost done, we can um, take a look um, yeah, check our glossary and see what is not in there yet. So if it's a completely new feature, we will always have new glossary entries that are have to be added to the glossary, of course. And um, when we have collected all the files with the text and also the glossary file with the new glossary entries, we um, write comments. So we um, try to explain, like, um, well, everything we know and would be, yeah, what is not in the briefing yet. So, example, um, if there's a placeholder, like a variable in the text, which can be a number, we try to explain that it's a number and uh, what kind of number it can be. So, for example, if it's always just, um, yeah, a thousand or two thousand, like this, they have to know because in some languages uh, you have to adjust the grammar according to what. Yeah, how high the number is actually, or we try to comment on, uh, yeah, if there are puns in it that may be not really clear or like, um, uh, yeah, references to like well-known books or films or something. We try to comment as much as we can with the time we have, uh, so that the translators, uh, yeah, have all the information they need. Hopefully. So when we prepared all of that, we send that out uh, to the agency. And we communicate uh, mostly with one or two project managers from the agency, so not directly with the translators, of course. And uh, during the localization phase, um, it's mostly their work. So we are just there for answering questions. Um, they will send us so-called translators' logs, where they um, I collect um, from different languages um, their questions, what they want to know or what they're not sure about, and we'll find solutions. Um, important example is when 
we have um, given a certain text length and they cannot keep to their text length because they would need to write it longer to have an adequate translation. So we try to find solutions if there's enough space or if we have to yeah, find a technical solution for that. Things like that. Um, yes, we then implement the changes. Like I said, we have new glossary files. We don't have, yeah, that are almost always there. Um, the in-game texts, uh, yeah, that's just the main part, of course. And also the marketing materials, because if there's a really new big event um, in a web game, our email marketing will probably also send out <laughs> uh, emails to like all players or all active players announcing that new feature and telling them they should enter the game, things like that. So these are the three most important components. Um, we also have to keep an eye on the timing delivery, not only before that we get the text to send them out, but during the localization phase, um, yeah, to remind the agency if they <coughs> yeah, may have started too late or things like that. So um, normally text will arrive on time, like to us, and we will, can already start to prepare tests in that phase, which we'll talk about later. Yes, when the text came back from the agency, we're doing a delivery check. Very important, um, files come back and we check for completeness and possible issues. That means we're basically um, checking formatting, like if there are double spaces somewhere or if the placeholders did not, uh, yeah, were not entered correctly or modified in some way. Or if the numbers are correct, because um, sometimes, especially if they get fuzzy matches on the translation memory, and there's a string where just the number was changed, it may not always be that every translator has changed the number, so we will check that. And we will also communicate changes to the agency, so if we then notice that we will have to shorten the string, because it will not fit the way we thought, or that we thought there was an issue, a technical issue with the placeholders, for example, we will communicate that so that they uh, can change it. And what after all the sex got implemented and checked, um, we will do a testing. Of course, normal testing, the feature tests, is themselves are by, made by a functional QA that has got not much to do with our department itself, just we know when they do test what. And all the QA is responsible for localization internationalization tests. That means um, internationalization tests are pretty much done before every update now. But as Martina said, we're trying to um, yeah, adapt our workflow still because uh, test, the whole testing thing is pretty new for us still. Um, internationalization tests is pretty much the uh, technical part means um, testers will not only check their native language but also other languages they will check for text that were cut that will not fit into a text box they will check if they can enter the correct uh, characters in the text field so when they're playing in Chinese they're probably not supposed to also enter uh, Korean characters so they will check if everything is alright with that um, they will also check date formats, all those kind of things, especially for the new features that come in. Because yeah, you cannot check everything every time. You have to suppose that they did not break anything completely unrelated in the future in the old game. Um, the localization test is a bit different. Um, it also checks um, the new feature mostly. Um, one tester will always check his own native language and um, yeah well basically uh, it's like a, a better proofreading of course because if you only proofread you can only check linguistic issues but if you see it takes in the game with the context it's always 
different and they can easier find out if something went wrong or if Transfers misunderstood something or yes, if the display is not as we thought it would be, so yes, they can see that in localization text. And we as um, project coordinators, we prepare the information for them as well, because we have always gathered it for the agency. So, and uh, as they are sitting with us in general in the company, they have access to all the information they need. They may even go to the game designers themselves and ask them, what does it mean? They can ask us, or they can ask clients if they have a problem with Chinese formatting, I think they can just go to them and say, uh, that's not how it's supposed to be, can we change that? So, and of course they will find different kinds of bugs. I don't know if you can see it. It's in red. Yeah. <laughs> so we have one thing, this is the button. And see, um, if we're testing, you will see that we have those things after every string, which are called pipes. And those pipes are, yeah, they show you when a string where the end of the string is. So even if you don't speak the language, you will see, oh, okay, I can see the whole string here. Here, this pipe is missing. So you know the text is not fully displayed because there's something missing. And then, yeah, you can lock this as a bug even if you don't speak the language. And um, same here, I think, yeah. The pipe is missing. So, um, but you see that there's enough space at the left so you could well, if you go to client, for example, you can, to the developers, you can just tell them, would you please move the text field to the left so that everything could be displayed? And mostly that um, is a solution we find. You do not always have to shorten the text so that it's, you can also find technical solutions. We, we do have to shorten a lot in mobile games. Yeah. Mobile is right. mobile, mobile is more restricted, of course. You cannot display so much. In web games, uh, like here, Empire, it's, yeah, if you have this button, you probably have to shorten it, but if you have a headline, you can also find a way to make the two lines or to widen it or things like that. Also, these screenshots are from our test servers, and so we have test environments where those pipes are displayed, so the test is now when the string ends. Um, and you have the option to use cheats, as you said, so it's easier for the testers to achieve level 70 if they need it to. <laughs> Else it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be possible to test live because there are just so many restrictions in time. I mean, in Empire, if you attack a player, it can take up to eight hours till the attack actually happens, so... Probably a building will take 40 hours sometimes. Yeah, so sometimes building. You can skip that so in game, and with cheats, it will be easier. So just go on for gaining levels. And so. Yeah, so, so do you want to summarize? Yeah, it's, I wrote just some few tips and tricks um, basically for localization projects. Um, in my opinion, it's really important to plan everything. Um, even if you know that the plan is going to probably change because the development team is very agile, <laughs> still you need to somehow plan it. Um, you need to know the game really well. That's For me, it's really important. Um, even as a translator, when I started, I just got this really strange game I never played before. And I was like, just, oh, I don't like this language. But after a few months, it's not that you get used to the language, but it's more that you see why it was, some things were translated like this. And it starts making sense. And you find other bugs, other translations, which are worse, much worse. Um, so to know the project is really important. Um, that's also probably why in-house translators are just so good at it because they are really playing the games and they are sitting in the company eight hours a day. So, um, yeah, for example, I uh, translated Shadow Kings when it was released into Czech, and we did also um, outsource Lock QA for the whole project for every language. 
and for Czech they found only like three typos in the whole game. So <laughs> yeah, well done. Um, but the testing took about four days, so those were really uh, expensive three typos I made. Um, and that brings me to the last point that testing the localization is so so important because of the, all the possible truncations you could have in the game and so you actually see your texts in the game, so you see how they work in the game. Yes, thank you and please ask questions. <laughs> Isabel and thank you Martina. I think that this was very interesting because it's quite a difference to be in a game developer um, environment than a bit distant from the developing process. Uh, at least the way you told um, localization is uh, done in your company. Um, one thing I heard uh, several times is that, for instance, in your company, the game is developed in German, mm -hmm. the original one, and then it is translated into English mm -hmm. before the other languages, which then are based on the English version, are localized. Um, is this because of uh, the availability of uh, translators? Yeah, uh, it's, it's really difficult to find translators in every language combination of German and they which, uh, who have additionally uh, also the uh, yeah, skills to, uh, to translate games because they um, you just find have a lot of resources um, from English and then you can just pick the best ones if you have translated from German you just have to pick the ones that are there and the quality is probably not as high but as we talked about humor and uh, other things, mm. uh, isn't this a, a certain risk? You, you lose a lot of uh, linguistic features. Well, that's why it's so good that the English team is with us in the company, so um, then we, we can talk to each other and if they uh, don't know how to write it, um, they will also recreate it and not just translate it, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they can also ask the game text or so, um, directly if they, uh, what did they mean with that pun and don't think about how to recreate that. Mm -hmm. um, Caroline, you, you talked about the amount of words that a localizer translator has to translate per day and the <coughs> um, figure you mentioned was 2,500. And even more if it's a translation of a script, if I remember well. Was um, if, it's, um, if it's continuous, uh, it can be impossible. Okay, okay. It's, it's if it's... it's uh, if it's something it's like, uh, for instance, dialogues go uh, a bit faster, and it's, uh, it's nice to work with the translator. Because you have uh, like it's continuous um, discussion, for instance, you stay on the same subject, and you're into it, it can go uh, faster. And that's why, the, in case of script, it, it can go faster. It seemed to me rather uh, huge, so... It, yeah, it can be uh, It can be a lot. Like, I think the metrics are actually between 2,000 and 2,500, usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and it depends, it depends on the subject. It's always um, different. Some scripts are going to be more difficult. If you have to work on what we were talking before, uh, have a specific language that you have to create, you cannot do 2,000 words per day because mm -hmm. you have to think about it constantly and try to find something, especially if each character is going to have a, a special uh, thing. But if you're translating a subject you know, uh, you work on Big Farm and every, every week you know you're going to have this update and you know the game, it can be faster. Mm -hmm. It's much, much faster. In your case, yeah. for instance, as, um, as you translate into Czech, can you um, say well, how much you um, <laughs> succeeded in translating per day? <laughs> um, well, I knew the game very well and I have played it, so it went really fast. Mm -hmm. Also, our games, I would say our games are not hard to translate. It's, it's not a hard language to mm -hmm. translate. Mm -hmm. Try to keep it pretty simple to attract 
as many plays as possible, so it from be, all ages. It should be also readable for children, for example, yeah. so the language isn't hard, so it was probably more than 3,000 words a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you talked as well about CAT tools. Which CAT tools do you use in your company? <laughs> I'm a cloud-based CAT. A cloud-based <laughs> CAT tool, and that's as much as we can say. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, we cannot tell. Okay. <laughs> yes, because um, I remember well. I did. I'm not sure, but I think. Uh, about seven years ago when I attended a game localization round table at the localization world conference it was perhaps the first time or at least the beginning phase of a well-organized game localization scene nobody of the representatives in this round table used casuals at that time and I really was astonished about uh, the chaotic way they work. And nowadays, if I hear Karin, <laughs> and so it's, it's really a well made up process, so it looks like uh, something you learn in theory. <laughs> so uh, at least it's much more, um, yes, it has much developed and uh, it's, it had really entered a new stage in, in this space. I think it's something that they, uh, they talked about a lot, and developers are more aware of localization now. And seven years ago, um, none of the developers knew about localization or cared about localization. They were creating games, and now developers in general um, care about other markets and trying to open their games. And, and they realize that it's not just about the, uh, just creating a game for here and for now, it's, it can happen in the whole world and it will happen in the whole world, but you need to think about it a bit more. I think this is a major difference. And as for companies, there is a lot more competition as well. So Yes, <laughs> I think it's um, maybe easier for a company like ours, where the games are like not released once and they're never touched again, but the developers know that there will be a new content like every week or, yeah, regularly and um, then I know they if they do things like not really without thinking about it or just like we do it like just in that it's in there and then they're attached it again that doesn't work so they know that they will have to change uh, things continuously and that also includes the localization so I think they have to think more about that. Mm -hmm. Also, we make workshops for, for example, yeah. artists, mm -hmm. uh, developers, product managers, game designers, project managers as well, so basically for everyone. <laughs> yeah. At the beginning uh, point or starting phase of uh, localization or when they are new in the company. Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or how we work and yeah. what we expect them to do. Yeah. Or if they need it again. That's also a function. <laughs> Refreshing. Refreshing knowledge. your knowledge about localization. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions from the audience? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you once again for your presentation. And, uh, <laughs>